I'm going to start as always by wetting the paper all over. Just using clean water and the large, large hake brush. Tabby I know, 15 by 11. Um, 130 pound. And I've got my usual <coughs> palette of seven colours, which you'll see listed in the description. <coughs> I'm going to start with a little bit of raw sienna. There's also a tad of um, burnt umber in that as well. Clean the brush. And then I'm going to go into ultramarine and just sort of paint in the, the, the sky between the clouds basically. There's going to be a river along here so I'm going to get some reflection in of the sky so I might as well put it in now while I've got it on the brush. And just a little bit over there. Clean the brush. And the cloud areas, I'm going to mix alizarin crimson and pines grey. A lot more grey than uh, crimson because crimson is such a strong colour and it very quickly dominates if you use too much of it. So, over on this side now, got the bits of clouds that are coming down into the mix again just to create a little bit of variation amongst the cloud itself and just bits in between the uh, in between the blue sky areas where these are the white clouds you're sort of painting negative shapes really and then this is where it's going to be some water so I'm going to Put some reflection in the water. Again, while I've got the colour on the brush, and that's enough for the sky now. I'm going to go. Just remove that straight out of the brush. Before I go any further, actually, I'm just going to pull the paper tight. You can see how it's stretched. Just simply a case of refixing over on this right hand side. And then I've got a flat surface to work with again. So I've got a clean brush, clean brush, and I'm going to go back into the sky clear colour. So raw sienna, ultra marine, and then because they're so far away, you, you can only you can only just about see them. Maybe make them a bit stronger so we've got half a chance of actually seeing them. That's enough, I think, for that. Here, there might be a touch of lemon yellow and just put in some just a little bit of land between there and what will be like the next the next tree which I'm going to put just over on there, this side here more blue Bit of planes grey just to try and get a bit of variation in it and then while the paint's still damp I'm going to press down hard at the bottom to create a wide trunk and then use just the side of 
Yeah, probably I've overdone that a little bit, so I'll just paint paint over the bits I don't like. And then maybe I can even get the um the number three rigger. Uh, maybe lemon yellow, ultramarine. And just flick a few, a few more twigs and, and branches coming out of this near near side tree. That's enough for that there. Just a couple of flicks on the bottom. Very easy to overdo it. I'm going to clean the brush and then over on this right hand side we've got some more starting about here got some more trees now you can see because I've got two or three I've got raw sienna ultramarine and lemon yellow on the brush and I haven't mixed it particularly well you can see all the different colours on there and you get this nice effect on the paper. I'm going to try too hard to get plenty of variation in the trees. Maybe introduce another one, raw, um, Payne's Grey, make it even a little bit darker. You can see very little effort, you get this nice variation. You don't want the same colour, monotonous colour all the way across. It just be, gets a bit boring to look at. Yeah, the, the view wants wants to be excited. <coughs> That's enough for that. What I'm going to do on this left hand side, I'm just going to bring the um, bring this lens a bit forward because I'm going to have a, a river here. I'm just going to define where this river is going to go. So this will be the bank. The bank of the river on the left hand side. And I'm going to clean the bush again.